Hello, and welcome to the Opinion Corner. Today, we are going to be talking about Solo, a Star Wars story, two years later. I wanted to make this video today because the other day, I was thinking, wow, Solo wasn't a very good movie while I was talking with you guys on one of my streams. Shameless plug of my streams, card at the top right of the screen if you want to check out my playlist. Also subscribe so you don't miss a stream. It's a great time. Anyways, we were discussing Solo and how I thought it was a pretty mediocre movie. And how I think, and I, I mentioned that I didn't think it came out at a very good time for Star Wars since it came out at the la after The Last Jedi, which is a very divisive movie, to say the least. So the other day, I decided to sit down and watch it again for myself on Disney Plus, Light Flex. And I have to say, I take back what I said on my stream. Solo is a very good movie, and I'm going to give you why I think that. So I'm going to give you a rundown about how this is going to work. Uh, images will pop up here when I'm making a point. That's pretty much how it's going to work. Uh, also, just so you guys know, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen Solo and you don't want me to spoil it, you might want to click off this video. Um, top right uh, card, top right, it's just some random video. Just check it out. Anyways, moving on to my cons uh, of this movie, and there are really only two, which is kind of shocking. But first off is going to be the droid. The droid is really annoying. Uh, glad they killed it off very early. But I think a lot of people can agree that the droid was quite annoying. I like their idea that like, oh, she has a good navigation system or whatever, and then that like ends up in the ship in the end. That's cute and all that kind of stuff. It's like cute little Disney stuff. Uh, like Disney could do whatever they want with the droids and like, oh, look at that, that's cool. But her personality, the droid's personality was quite annoying. Like she just wouldn't shut up about like freeing everybody or anything. If that's her only personality trait is like freeing people, you can kind of get annoying. So at least they killed it off earlier and kind of had a hero's death. So that was cool enough. Um, so I'm glad they kind of ended it well and also ended it early. Uh, and also I'm glad that the droid couldn't like talk throughout the ship because that would have just been so much more annoying. Just turn off the voice, turn off the voice. And my second con is kind of weird, but anyways, my second con is that last scene with Darth Maul and Kira is just strange. Uh, when they're talking like, yeah, okay, they can talk. Then Darth Maul didn't look too good, honestly. Um, you look like you put on a little bit of weight. You should probably lay off the death sticks. But the main problem I had um, wasn't really like the the visual appearance of Darth Maul, which again was strange. But it was just a weird interaction because like it was weirdly non-formal but also formal at the same time. And then Kira was just like, oh, blah 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 is dead. Um, and then Darth Maul like pulled his lightsaber. He's like, you and I, and he next his lightsaber. And he's like, you and I will be working much closer together. I'm like. First of all, why are you igniting your lightsaber over a hologram? And, like, is it some ceremony? Like, I don't get it. It was just cringe. I kind of cringed when I saw it, and I didn't like it. I don't like when I cringe. I don't think a lot of people like when they cringe, um, unless it's, like, a TV show in which the uh, people creating the show want you to cringe. I, I just made me cringe. So those are my two problems with the movie. Moving on to my pros of the movie. I think they chose great actors to represent both young Lando and young Solo. I think that is a major point of conflict. Uh, a lot of people don't think that the person who played Solo did a very good job of capturing Harrison Floyd. And I don't think you understand how hard it is to reenact one of the best actors of all time. Like, how can you, how can you do that? It doesn't make sense. It was way too high of an expectation. I think he did a great, great job at portraying Solo as a younger person. And I like how they started by seeing that he does, seeing that like naturally he does have a good side throughout the, throughout the entire movie. We can look at the arc there. Um, he wants to help out the people in need. So we know that deep down he has good in him and we learned that in the original, original trilogy more. But it's kind of his position and his environment that kind of shapes him to like not care. Or his first instinct is to not care. And we kind of learned that with this movie, why Han Solo doesn't really want to get involved in the whole rebel business. Um, because a lot of his friends died while, um, throughout this entire movie. So he definitely has some confliction about helping people in that kind of sense. Moving on to Crimson Dawn, this, uh, the crime syndicate. Mm, they did a great job portraying that. Uh, the ship... The ship design and shape was perfect. Uh, they captured the mood perfectly also within the ship. It wasn't like um, The Last Jedi where they did that, whatever the casino place planet was, that was just poorly, poorly done. And I think Dryden Voss was a very good villain. Um, cool marks on his face, pretty sick. But definitely very menacing. And I like the idea of kind of focusing on like the scum of Star Wars. 
definitely a good plot device. I think Beckett was also a very, very good character uh, in the sense that he didn't trust anybody. And the, fir the only person he sort of trusts or you think he trusts is his girlfriend and she dies like pretty close to the beginning of the movie. But then after she dies, he's like, I don't trust anybody. So it really shows you how battle-hardened Beckett is. And he definitely stays that way throughout the entire movie. There isn't much of an arc that he has, I guess you could say. Um, but I don't think there really needs to be. There needs to be, I think he's a great uh, symbol for that constant scum and the person who doesn't trust anybody else. And I think they did a good job, almost like the, the control group of the whole experiment. Then we, we have the really bad, which is Dryden Voss. Uh, then we have Beckett, who's like, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust Dryden. I don't trust you. Uh, I don't trust Han. I don't trust Kira. I don't trust anybody. I don't even trust my own girlfriend that much. Um, and he's, he's kind of like the person who's affected by everything around him, the whole crime around him. And that's something that is a symbol that Han Solo could become this. But then you look at Han Solo and he kind of, he has the naiveness about him because he doesn't re truly understand the crime world. Yes, he grew up stealing things, but he doesn't understand true crime like a crime syndicate. Speaking of his upbringing, great opening scenes, or great opening act, I guess you could say. Very engaging, puts you right into it. I've heard that people think it's slow. I don't think it's slow at all. I think it actually does a better job than Rogue One, and I really like Rogue One. I think Rogue One isn't slow enough at the beginning. Everything happens so quickly. Death Troopers come, she's got to run, and then there's Saw Gerrera, and then it just kind of happens, 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 happens. And then they jump 16, 13 years, whatever it is. Uh, it's kind of a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I like the way how it's a lot um, slower, and I like their transition from when he's in the when he's asking to be in the Naval Academy, and then boom, he's on Mimban. Great job! I think they did a great job with that. I think Disney was very smart about telling the Kessel story. Um, I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't really want to know." how Han Solo got his name, oh I don't really want to know why the Millennium Falcon looks like this, oh I don't really want to know what the Kessel Run was. Why don't you? I feel like a lot of people are like, they got upset that they that Disney kind of did away with all of those Star Wars legends, which explains a lot of things, but then they get mad when Disney explains the backstory of Han Solo. I don't really understand that. I think it's cool to learn the backstory of our characters. I'd actually like to see a backstory of Lando. I think that'd be a very cool movie. I think Lando's a very engaging character. And I think he was portrayed very well by Donald Glover, to be honest. So, honestly, I don't see the problem with kind of explaining things um, about certain characters. I think it makes the characters a little bit more human, a little bit more engaging. I understand people like the mysteriousness of some characters, like Snoke. Um, and I do too, but I think Han Solo is such a loved character, a beloved character, that you can't really do that with him. So, I'm, I'm glad Disney kind of made this movie. I know a lot of people aren't. They don't want to see the backstories and stuff, but I think it's... It's going to be good. And then people are excited for the new Obi-Wan series, which is coming out, which kind of explains the time period between the third uh, episode and the fourth episode. So I, I don't see the backlash for explaining Obi-Wan's life in that area. So I think it's a little bit, I think the Star Wars fans are being a little bit inconsistent when it comes to this kind of point. And so I think it's pretty much invalid, if you ask me. I really like what they did on Mimban, um, how they met. Great job. I think that was really funny. Um, and that Han Solo could speak Wookiee. I think that was... That was really good. So I think they did a great job. They didn't overdo it at all. I think they explained just enough, and they did just enough in the movie to make it very engaging, um, very likable, um, and quite fun, to be honest. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's just like a, it's one of the fun Star Wars movies. It's not like a, a great one. And I agree. It's not like Empire. You can't, con you can't really compare Solo to Empire. But I think it's definitely better than pretty much all of the sequel trilogy. I think it's better than... Um, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Uh, so I think it kind of gets a bad rap, to be honest. And I still think that is due to the fact that it came out after The Last Jedi, which is the most divisive Star Wars movie um, to date, I believe. I, I don't think that's fact. I don't think that's factual, but from what I've seen, it's very split. You either love The Last Jedi or you hate it. And I see a lot of actual, true Star Wars fans hate it. And I hate it as well. I think it's done a terrible job. But anyways, that could be another... Um, the Opinion Corner episode. And now that I'm thinking about it, I forgot to mention Kira. And Kira is a kind of iffy moment for me. I like the idea of like a love story. I think that's a great story to tell. And I also like how he didn't end up with the girl at the end. And that she is so invested in this life or so brainwashed into the life of crime that she doesn't even join her true love or her um, what makes her smile when, he th when she thinks about him. So I think, again, great job not giving everybody 
necessarily a redemption slash story arc. The crime in Star Wars isn't a very noble thing. And I don't think that everybody who was in the crime industry should have a noble redemption story. And they did a great job with that, I think. So in the end, I think Solo is a good movie. Definitely uh, doesn't deserve the, not hate, but the, I think that Solo definitely deserves more praise than it gets. Um, because a lot of people say it's like a mediocre movie, and I'm, I was one of those people too, but rewatching it, I really enjoyed it. Um, people were definitely kind of still recovering from The Last Jedi when they saw that, and so they were like, eh. Uh, but looking back, definitely a good movie. So if you guys have Disney Plus or have Solo in some way, I definitely encourage you to rewatch it if you were on the fence whether you think it's a good movie or not. I think it's great. Let me know what you think of Solo down in the comments. Uh, I want to see what you guys think. And if you disagree with me, leave something down below and try and change my mind. Uh, so I think that'll be interesting. Also in the comments below, please ask a question, ask an uh, opinion of mine. Ask a question in next week's episodes, I will address your questions on opinions. So that's how the series is gonna go. You're gonna comment down below um, what you want my opinion on. And then in the next episode, I answer them. So I think that'll be great. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this new series. If you do, please hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe for content daily and streaming four times a week. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. See you guys later.